Welcome back to the channel, guys. My name's Pete. Today I have my buddy John Jenkins with me in his really beautiful R33 GTR. Did a few little upgrades, and now we're gonna take you for a test drive. You're watching HD Works. I got you a little gift here. Um, this came from all the way from Australia, and, and hopefully this will complete your your build here. Okay, all right. I know you were missing something. <laughs> oh, my new badge of honor, man. Oh, man, I appreciate this, no brother. No problem. I appreciate this, man. Anytime. Already, brother. Show the camera there, the. Yeah, <laughs> hey, look. We went from this to this. <laughs> yeah. Moving up like the Jefferson. Moving up. <laughs> Frenchie's performance did that for us in Australia, so oh, shout out man. to Frenchie. Shout out to Frenchie, man. All right, let's get it. Like shakes. All right, John, let's go for a rip. See how this thing does. skeptical about taking on projects that somebody else has completed or started um, because I don't know what I'm gonna get um, this particular car your car had like a little little history to it so I kind of knew where it came from last so on top of it all I was like okay I know it's gonna find some surprise but I wanted to make sure that we got you to the end so like none of the things that even the, in worst case scenario um, it, the, if they came to me, I wouldn't be wouldn't be not able to fix them. But it, it's in your situation. It was it was uh, it, it got to a point where um, I didn't want you to have to like do things two or three or four times, and you had already been down that road a little bit. So uh, luckily, this car wasn't like crazy uh, messed up, but it wasn't good. Like the, the the structure was there. The motor itself was healthy enough, but like everything around it ended up being like uh, needing, needing some serious freaking repairs. Yeah. <laughs> we had all sorts of uh, plumbing issues and we had to kind of reinvent everything inside the engine bay. Uh, it, was, it wasn't the prettiest thing, now it's very pretty. Um, but I was very, I was a little skeptical, but I wanted to see it through for you and, and provide at least somebody that gave you a, a correct experience 
because uh, you'd been kind of dicked around so many times, yeah. like well, shop to shop to shop to shop. So it, it was even more important to me to like make sure that I follow through for you, uh, regardless of what I found in there. It, it, that's kind of what I was. It, that's what I was up against. So. You know, and I, and I appreciate that. You know, um, like like uh, like you mentioned, uh, I have been uh, toyed with. You know, and, and it sucks being in my profession where people take advantage as if like, oh, they just expect the money to come, which it does come, right? Cause yeah. I, my job is to rely, I'm supposed to rely on a mechanic to do, you know, have that enough ethics within their brand and themselves to do what they're supposed to do. Yeah. But unfortunately it never turns out to be that way, right? Yeah. So um, then as you got into the car, you know, there were some things that y'all decided to do that you felt like would be good for the aesthetics of the car, right? You did uh, the fusers on the front bumper diffusers, yeah. which, um, I never thought that I would be doing, but I like it a lot. Um, there were uh, a few other things that, that you've done as well, too. You changed the cluster in the dashboard yep. um, with, with the upgraded hull tag, right? Yep. Uh, these are a lot of things that I, I picked uh, I picked up, and I was on the same page with you as you were making these upgrades, which I appreciate a lot sure, as well, yeah. right? Oh God, oh God, oh God, off run! Yeah. <laughs> and we live in Boca, right? This is oh, Boca, what the f***? <laughs> but, um, but you know, so as you was going through the process, man, what was your expectation, like the finished product, like what goal, what numbers? Because me personally, for all the viewers, uh, I just wanted a car to be able to turn and run. Right. I was tired of having to watch all these, which you know you're supposed to have the gauge clusters for these reasons. Yeah. But I was tired of not being able to use the car more than two days. Yeah. And then having to bring it back to the mechanic because this wasn't done right or this wasn't completed. Or yeah, et cetera. Something would break or something with yes, this or that. Yes, no. yes. So the biggest thing for me is reliability. So like regardless of the power number that it makes, like I don't even care what the power number is. I want it to be able to work every time without needing adjustments or needing things. Because when you build these cars, they shouldn't have to be this uh, you know, project and the science experiment every time you get in the car to like have to turn something on. You should yeah. just, just like you get in your Audi or you get in your truck, you want to turn it on. Like it yeah. shouldn't be any more difficult than that, right? Yeah. It should idle like it is now. It should have AC on like it is now. It shouldn't well, be that much more difficult. It's a GTR, so we got to have some power though, right? Right. Like, it'd be crazy if we was in the skyline, a GTR, and then it's only like doing 200 Right, so right. horsepower, yeah. right? Making stock numbers, <laughs> right. Wouldn't be silly. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I knew the block was uh, built, it had forged internals at least. We didn't build it, uh, but I knew that it had some sort of forged internals. I was like, okay. So we did some inspection, did a compression test, checked the head stud, made sure everything was together. Um, and I was comfortable around the six, 700 horsepower area because the, the block wasn't braced, right? So they'd have a tendency to kind of split a little mm -hmm. bit. I didn't want to make sure that, you know, I get a call, hey, Pete, my engine's in half. I didn't, <laughs> so we wanted to keep the numbers at a, at a level that were safe enough for the, for the actual structure of the engine. Uh, and that's kind of that six, seven horsepower mark. Yeah. The turbo manifold wasn't my favorite. Remember we had to modify yep. the turbo manifold because if they're not designed right, what ends up happening is the turbo cannot expel the gases out of the wastegate fast enough as it's building boost. So it'll physically want to just take off. It'll like do this exponential curve, yep. like all the way up. Uh, and that's what was happening. Remember we got to the dyno and then we'd only had one gate on. I actually yeah. had to make two gates for it. So yep. separate gates, the whole nine yards. So. Uh, that we solved that, and I, I forget what, what what did we make on this thing? Do you remember? Uh, we made uh, low sixes actually. Like six and change. Six, like six, like six. I think like six twenty. Yeah, well, six twenty six. Yeah, I think it's like mid sixes. So, that, yeah. and, and that's really good for this car. Yeah. I, I think that I think and and that's plenty for the street. Like that'll that'll put yeah, you in the seat, I'm, no problem. I'm still a professional athlete, so I can't, you know, I get pulled over by the cops doing, you know, crazy numbers, then it is it's ugly for my career. Right. So I, I appreciate that. You know? <laughs> I appreciate that, right? <laughs> but um, but no, you're absolutely right, man. Um, I have enough power in here to toy around with some guys. Yeah, you, you to play. You, you, know? you can play on the highway a little bit and yeah, enjoy you yourself. Know? AC still works. Yeah, right. See, <laughs> and that was one of the things I was missing, right? Yep. When I got the car. <laughs> the AC didn't work, and yeah. you know, it was hot, bro. It was hot. It's I'm, Florida. I'm, I'm 300 plus pounds in a, in a heated car, bro, with no AC. That's ugly. Yeah. That, that's, that's ugly. And when I got it, too, this is another thing we found. It had none of the AC components. So I was like, 
I was hunting for, for a long time to find a lot of stuff. We had to make a lot of the AC lines. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. Remember, that's true. they didn't exist. That's I had to replace true. the core. The, the core had been undone for so long, it was actually clogged internally. It wasn't passing any fluid. So like, I had to get a new core for it. I had to make some of the lines. It was a, it was a treat, but we finally, <laughs> finally got AC in the car. We're enjoying it today, and, so which is good. And, and during this project, right, this experiment with you, right? Like I said, I said in the beginning, I was skeptical. I'm like, bro, sure. listen, like, at this point, man, just make my, like, I've been through enough shops, just make my car work, bro. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't want to be buddy buddies. Right. And now we cycling buddies. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but um. But that comes after though. Yeah. That right? always comes after. But um, but one thing I did realize that you're very resourceful. Every time we needed something or I came across something, I'm like, hey, Pete, can you get this? Uh, give me about a day. I, I'll track it down. For Find you. it. Yeah. I'm like. Huh. Remember, we needed another mirror. The side mirror was cracked. Yep. We found the side mirror. Yep. We also needed the um the rear lights because you remember the real uh the headlights. Yep. The uh, they was all fogged up. Yep. The the tail lights. Yep. Yeah, the tail lights. Yeah, the tail lights. It was fogged up, and we was able to track those down. Yep. Which was impressive as well. Yep. Because. Damn. <laughs> the, the parts are hard to find, and what we want to try to do is, I don't want to ever say no to you, right, or or anybody. Like when we're building something, I want to be able to be your guy. Yeah. So if it takes me a little bit of finessing to figure stuff out or or resource stuff, because it's not like we have stocks of these parts. I got to find yeah. them. I got to call somebody in Australia. Got to call somebody in Japan. I got to call. Hey, do you have one of these? And then we got to get it. You know, it might not be next day, obviously, but. If I can get it, I'm gonna do it, you know, for sure. So now there's not like things on the car that are like, oh, I don't like this, or like it's broken yeah. or nothing works. It all works, yeah. you know? So at least you have something to be proud of now uh, as a completed thing, because it was always missing something, I feel like. Yes. It was always like almost done, but not really, or mechanically it needed just one more thing. And we had to go through the, full, the whole thing, fuel system and all, we did the whole thing. No, no, I can't, man. Bro, I went to so many motors. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How many motors did you do? Like, at one point, I, like I did have a, a 2.8 Tomei Stroker. Yeah. That motor blew. Yeah. Um, I, like, it can go on, but if we keep going on, then you know, <laughs> it's it, a long story. Yeah, it's long stories, and right now we're all we're talking about this. We're celebrating yeah. the, the finished product. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. You yeah. know, I purchased this car 10 years ago, 2013. Well, almost 10 years. Well, it is 10 yeah. years ago. Yeah. Um, I never really got the opportunity to fully, fully enjoy the car until yeah. now. So you've yeah. had no stress with it now. Now that yeah. it's like you know done. So it's uh, no. I think but the biggest stressful thing now is uh, you know keeping the battery charged and yeah. making running it every yeah. once in a while, yeah. <laughs> which is good. Those yeah. are good problems. I want you to have those. Yeah, you know? Yeah. So I'm not like shit. It's not gonna ever start or this. No, right? <laughs> like we in the car got AC. But yeah. I can't remember the last time I was in this car with AC. With AC, yeah. 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 Which is, you know, phenomenal. I appreciate you, brother. Anytime, man. All good, man. Anytime. Now, you know, um, I think uh, people want to probably... You want to you hear a little yeah. bit? You, you want to see what our, our little mods did today? <laughs> can do it. Uh, so we got... Uh, <laughs> see, look. This is literally what I'm talking about. What's up, man? <laughs> you want to rev it? <laughs> you ready? We made an exhaust. I made you an yeah. exhaust. It didn't have. It had like some Bobo exhaust on it. So we made you a full titanium slip fit four inch exhaust. Things sound sick. Yeah. So I drove it home uh, yesterday when we picked it up. Uh -huh. uh, literally, my wife's in the car. Like almost every every 20, 20, 20 minutes, fifteen minutes, somebody's like, "Hey man, sick car, bro." <laughs> like, she's like, "What? Are, what are all these people all about? I don't understand." I'm like, babe, this is like the car. Like yeah, everybody yeah, loves this thing. It was it was like. I had like old man, probably seven year old man in a BMW, like that's fucking sick. Yeah. I had like kids, I had like yeah. like twenties, thirties kids, like it was so cool, man. Oh man. <laughs> and, you know, and, and, I, and I think that's the uh, that's the love for the culture, bro. Yeah. Uh, one thing I, I respect about the culture is the fact that uh, it doesn't matter what walk of life you 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 
part of, man. Everybody gravitates to, you know, what they like, and a lot of people love the import scene, right? Uh, I know me personally, the uh, reason why I moved down to South Florida, rest in peace, was Paul Walker. Mm -hmm. So um, I wanted a 34, but I couldn't afford one, so I got our 33. And I've been chasing that dream ever since. Yeah. So it's just, you know, for the love of the culture, man. South Florida, beautiful weather, skylines, GTRs, Supras, all the above. Yeah, car culture is huge here. The, and that's what we do. We just, we make, we finish these things. We yeah. make them cool. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm thankful to be able to do that and, and pick and choose kind of what we want to do because yeah. I want to build cool cars, right? I want to build like the most iconic cars possible. Yeah. And like this is one of them, the 33s, the 34s, 32s, and then all the other niche cars. That's what we want to do. That's what I love. That's what I have passion for. You know, I don't want to change tires. I want to like build cool shit. Like, you know, like just like you, you know, you have a passion for football and you have a passion for things. Like this is my, you know, this is my passion. This is what I get excited about. Like, and, you know, making it complete for some. Somebody. That that's what gets me excited, you know. Yeah, so. man. I mean, uh, you know, you got a you got a good reputation. So then, let me ask you this, bro. So like, <clears throat> knowing my story and, and how I got to you, like, is that a common thing for you? Is that something like you always have to fix yeah, other yeah. people's problems? Or and a lot of times, I, I and my and my thing is, I don't think shops uh, down here. I, sometimes I think when the money or, or they always try, it's a trendy situation. Mm -hmm. So when a new car come out, they want to be the first one to say, oh, I gave this, I made, right. uh, I built something, a package to give this car a certain amount of horsepower. Right. Everybody want to keep up with the trends. Yep. So then when they get cars, like older cars that they already dealt with, they already worked on, they already proven themselves with it, then they don't show enough care and they're not, they, they don't do their things. They, yeah. they, they just forget all about their integrity of being a mechanic, yep. being a shop owner and, and the passion on yeah. why they started this. I agree. So now, going back to my question, do you get these problems common? Like, are these common problems for you, having to fix other people's problems? It, it's a really good question. And and honestly, um, and I've said this a million times, I would say at least half or like 65% of our work is uh, fixing other shops' work and the lack of integrity that they had or they missed out on or the parts that weren't installed in the car. Yeah or the, you know, just the lack of follow through, like they'll put it together, but they don't, they don't finish it. Or they put it together very haphazardly in, in a way that, you know, leaves you on the side of the road. You know, uh, it, you know uh, we had one come from a shop the other day and, and we had to rebuild his entire GTR, but like he would literally have to take a jump pack with him yep. to start it I'm when it stalled. Right, exactly, it's my, it's my, but you shouldn't have to. You shouldn't yeah. have to go through that, you, you know, at all. Yeah. It shouldn't be like in your wheelhouse. You shouldn't have to think about any of that stuff, yeah. you know? So uh, it, it, it's really frustrating to watch people um, go through it over and over and over and over yeah. again. Uh, it, it, and, it, and, and then I'm the third guy that touches it now and we have to sometimes do it. <laughs> Is that clutch? Yeah, uh, <laughs> man. It's a monster, man. Yeah. Uh, stage three. You know, the stage three clutch, yeah. uh, trust me. But, so, um, it, so it's, it, again, it's, it's very frustrating to watch over and over yeah. again. Uh, people get taken advantage of, uh, and then us be the, 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 the guy at the end that uh, has to fix it all, you know? So uh, we try to mitigate it as much as possible. I try to get you to me before anything, um, it's just so we can kind of nip it in the butt a little yeah. bit. Uh, but unfortunately, just like your particular circumstance, like you were, I was like number three. Yeah. So I had to undo a lot of this shit at that, 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 you know, you had already paid two or three times for. Correction, you were number four. Ah, so you see, exactly. And I don't even know. I don't even know the half of the story yeah. sometimes, you know? Yeah, yeah. so, uh, but, um, but then, you know, and, and I think one of the, one of the biggest problems, you know, and, and, and a lot of times this is like a, a, a PSA to like other people, like other shops or, you know, when, Take on a project, just make sure that you're able to do the project. Yeah. Don't do the project for selfish ambition. Like, you know, because me personally, I'm I'm a, an athlete, right? So a lot of people that take on shop like, oh, I'm working on this players, uh this this guy, he plays for or he works and he do this, right. you know, car just so they can get that name out, but right. they don't actually do the job right. and they get upset, right? So it's, it's one of the things where we all are here for the culture, right? And 
I think if you take on a project, just do right by the people, right? Yeah. You're, you're finish like, it. You're, finish it up. You're, you're, you're the fourth guy. <laughs> I mean, bro. I, I don't mean to laugh, but it's stupid. It shouldn't have to be like that. I mean, but at the end of the day, though, Pete, um, you know, you you're used to uh, you're used to these problems. I'm pretty sure other shops are used to yeah. similar problems. I'm not the only one. I'm not yeah, the only one. I, yeah. And um, there are some good shops. I don't want to make it seem like no, there's no, not. I doubt, I but. Doubt. There, there's they all have their niche like i don't really do a lot of gm stuff right so like a lot of the domestic guys they don't, they don't come to me yeah. now could i build that car just as well as i build these yeah of course yeah but it's just not like i don't have passion for that like i have passion for these cars uh -huh. you know so so then let me uh then tell me this if you had if i brought this car to you you know as a shell yeah what would have what would have been your ideal build me. Oh, from if, if you came to me day one. Yeah, day one. Okay. Depending on your horsepower goals, you know, if you said I wanted a thousand, we would we would make it, right? Yeah, yeah, no, I want a thousand. Let's just stick like probably six to eight. Right. Between there. I, I would have done a I would have done a two eight like you had in the car. Okay. It's a little bit more torque. Uh, it would have been now back in back when you bought the car, a lot of stuff like that's out now wasn't out then. But okay. let's pretend it was, yep. right? So it would be uh, an Artec manifold, uh, G series turbo or precision turbo, uh, appropriately sized, uh, and then it would spool really, really good. HKS suspension of some sort or Olins on the car, R35 brakes, um, no rust, full restoration, and like uh, all of the Hall Tech stuff that you can buy for it, the dash and everything else. Yep, yep. Kind of, you're 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 most of the way there now, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. So like, I, I I twisted your arm a little bit anyway, so which is good. Uh, but it, this car is, you know, in my like mind anyway, really similar to how I build one from scratch. I would just go down because I have my list of parts that I love, uh -huh. and I, and they're they're in that list for a reason because yeah. they work. Yeah. They freaking work every time, right? So, uh, but this car is really close to that. If you wanted more power, I'd move you into like an RB30 or I'd move you into something else. But in that power range, I think a 2.0 would be perfect. Okay. Maybe, I, I actually like the cams that are in this car. Uh, they're, um, I think they're pond cams from Tomei. Yep. They're nice and lopy. The car sounds like brr, 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 yep. which is cool. So um, I'm excited, uh, you know, always to build cars, but that, you're very close now to what it would be like if, it, 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 exactly. Uh, but you had some of the stuff already, which is cool. You didn't have the whole tech stuff uh, and some of the other things. And we fixed a lot. The manifold would be different. Like, I don't love this manifold, like I said. But you're close. Yeah. You're definitely close. You know, I probably, even if we kept it at seven, I would have done a brace in this car just to put the brace in the car. Okay. Uh, just so that, you know, it's a little bit of peace of mind. You know, okay. uh, if you ever did want to send it once, you could send it okay. and it would be okay. <laughs> so then, uh, now... <laughs> What do you what do you uh, what do you see common that happens with this car? Like is something wrong that you try to uh, that you try to get ahead of it, right? You, so you try to find parts to eliminate the common issues that come with this car. Good question. Um, uh, there's a lot of things. So these are like 30 year old cars. So a lot of times there's another one. <laughs> um, a lot of the uh, regular maintenance stuff always gets overlooked when we get these cars. Uh -huh. So even if somebody brings me a car off the boat, it, I'm gonna assume it needs everything. It needs brakes, it needs tires, uh, it needs coolant flushes, uh, it'll probably need a clutch, it'll need uh, you know all sorts of just regular boring stuff that nobody wants to do. Yeah. That is like, uh, not a waste of money, but it, it, nobody did it. So like, yeah. you know, you have to almost build these things from scratch and assume that they're no good because like you know you get down the road your belts fly off or they're broken just all the maintenance stuff all, normally the cv boots are all gone in the front like almost every single time so i always stock those because they're hard to get uh, here in the united states anyway so um you know, the regular the, the maintenance stuff the boring stuff is what i see most of the time um or i'll see a lot of electronics in the car that don't need to be in the car and we'll replace them with a whole deck or something okay. like that you know Makes sense. yeah um, but it, it, sometimes you'll luck out, like you'll luck out on one that's like pretty close. And I see it in the Evos too, uh, we get a lot of imports of those. They're kind of close sometimes, not all the time, but they're close sometimes, uh -huh. you know? Uh, but we always we always just do the boring maintenance stuff and the timing and the water pumps and all that stuff uh, out of the gate. That way we know moving forward that they've been replaced. And so if there is another issue, well, it's not that, it's not that, it's not that. You know, we can rule that out, so. Okay, um, I mean, but, so you got it down to a science, right? Yeah. That fit you. Right? Yeah, that works, That that's kind of our formula that works yeah. for us, for sure. 
Uh, suspension stuff, ball joints are always bad uh, on the cars. The inner, inner and outer tie rods are always bad on the cars. Um, steering racks are always leaking on the cars. Because again, they're 30 years old, man. Everything leaks. Yeah. It's like <laughs> it's an old shit box. Like I love them to death, but they're just they're just old cars, man. Yeah. You got to go through them. You can't expect them to drive like your new your new GMC or your new Chevy or whatever it is. You know your daily drive. It's not going to drive like that. Yeah. You know you have to expect something out of the gate. Uh, and then you can always move on to the fun stuff after that. That's yeah. what I would say. You get the boring shit out of the way, and then you move to the fun stuff after that. So. But, yeah, um, I, I'm super glad you let us take you for a ride today and experience this a little bit. Uh, I'm glad uh, the car is working properly for you now. Yeah, <laughs> at, least, at least it's in one piece and driving forward, and there's no hiccups. Yeah. It drives good. You know. I wanted, uh, you know, I wanted to interview you. I wanted to interview the guy who uh who said he can do the job yeah and you know the job was done you know pretty well and, uh, so. and we got to the end <laughs> and, it, and it starts every time yeah, so, which is yeah. good so i you know i have this uh <clears throat> this os guy can triple this right yeah <laughs> we're gonna experience it right now yeah i know right here it goes okay <laughs> <laughs> would you have recommend that i would have never put this clutch in this car for you Right, at this power level. I like the clutch, it's easy on the transmission, yeah. right? So it, it lets the, the transmission disengage from the motor quickly and it lets the, it's very easy on the synchros, right? Yep. But it's very hard to drive, that's the that's oh, the trade-off. Oh my goodness. It's very and difficult traffic, to drive. going up the hill. Right. Bro, I know everywhere, I know all the traffic routes at certain times when I drive this car. <laughs> You're like, I'm not I taking it? Avoid every hill, because you know when you get on a highway, you yep. got to go over the hill, you got to go up a little hill yep. to get on the highway. Yeah. All, bro, I know all the scenic routes. I know everything. <laughs> bro, it was times where I felt like I had to go study. So I would take this car at 12 o'clock at night and just drive everywhere. Right, just to get some just, seat time. Ju just to get seat time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah. man! Yeah. Oh man! Yeah, oh, I, 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 every time the car was either like dropped off at the shop by somebody, yeah. or like they're like, "Well, we got it on the rack, but the board slipped out because of the clutch, and it cracked all the things on it." Cause remember, I had to yeah. repaint the the spats on the back because yeah. the, the, it would drop off the truck. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, bro. So anyway, to answer your question, no, I wouldn't have put this in there. Like, I don't love this thing. It's not fun to drive. I, I would put another twin disc in it, but it just wouldn't be this one yeah. for you. It would be. An any twin disc or something that sprung a little bit. These are literally just centered discs that aren't sprung. It's like a solid disc inside there. So when it grabs, it goes beep, and yeah. it, that's it. It grabs, you know? Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, when this thing goes and you switch these gears, she likes it, man. Never drive this car, you know? Get, it'll get the man. smile on your face for sure. Man, listen, it's just, it makes it's all the like right noise. Emotion. Yeah, yeah. I can just, I'm a windows down kind of guy, so oh, you, 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 so like, we're only doing the AC today for the interview, but uh, I just love the symphony that it makes. Oh, I like, man. I don't care how sweaty I get, I'm like, fuck it, I just want to hear the noise. Oh. I don't give a shit. It's so, it's so beautiful. So, this is one of the best sounding motors that there is. Especially at night, you know, oh. when oh. like, during the cooler months, Ooh. even though we're in South Florida, it doesn't get really that cool. Uh, Cooler. When the turbo weather hits. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Get on the highway just by yourself. You can hear it. It's like, oh, it sounds so good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, something about this motor, man. It, they're, they're just, they're, they're, they're very magical. Um, well, you know, um, regardless, everything is happy for a reason, man. You did a pretty good job, bro. You did the job Thank you. you done. You know, you and your guys on the shot, man. Yep, yep. You know, I can't even. I, I didn't do it myself. Was done in a timely fashion. Yeah. Everything was professional. You know, like yep. I didn't have to wait years. Yep, yep. You know, you got the part. It was very, you know, straightforward. And I think that was probably, you know, the best experience I had. Yeah. Because, man, I'll tell you right now, for all the viewers, I'm ready to get rid of this car. After a while, <laughs> you were frustrated, I was dude. Just extremely frustrated. Man. Yeah. I, was just frustrated. I see that. And that's what I see all the time. People are just so gutturally frustrated by the time they see me like I'm like ah, fuck like I don't even want to give them this bill because like you know like I gotta you know I, I have to cover my ass you yeah. know at the shop but at the same time like you've already done this this yeah. is our you've already been down this road so that's yeah. tough man yeah. it's super super tough um, yeah I, 
the, the, what I like to do the most is just be able to be transparent with whoever I'm building with, right? So like we set up a notes with you so you could like, I don't have to like text you every 10 seconds. There's always a log of notes and hours. Remember, yeah. remember when we set it up? So like, you know, n whether I'm working on it or my guys are working on it, we're always logging hours. Yeah. So at the end, you can, you, can, you can see like, all right, Pete's charged me 50 hours total for this thing. I, I can do the math. Yep. Exactly. And there's descriptions and then there's pictures yep. before and after. Remember like remember when we did our first diag, which we normally do, we take the car in and diag the whole thing. All those pictures of the yep. shit that I found, right? It was just like mountains of it. And you were like, no way. And I'm like, way. And you're like, no way. Oh, see look, I can't even drive it. It's being cranky. <laughs> there we go. Okay. <laughs> we all been there. Right. So anyway, uh, that's what I love to do is to give you transparency, right? Yeah. To, so you can see the ve the value and the work that we're doing. And so when you get to the end of it, you'll be like, wow, okay, well, that makes sense. There's a clear path to the end, you know? Yeah. Parts and labor and all of it, you know? Uh, that way there's no, like, hiding. I think a lot of guys like to do this, like, blanket number, right? And whether that works for them or not, like, for me, it doesn't work because I always, I always do more than I than I bargain I want to do because of my, my own personal pride. I want to like get in there and like just do extra because I fucking love it so much. Yeah. And, and so I get ahead of myself and we're like, oh, we got to do this. So we get, and, and then you and I, uh, you know, client, we, we, we both get excited, you know, when we're doing it. So um, it, it always envelops itself into this other thing. But the cool part for me is that it always, there's always a record of it, you know, of where it came from. So, and, that, and that's what I like. So. And that's how you keep your, your clients happy, bro. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because now they know where their money is going. Yeah. And they can itemize everything, you yep. know, keep the, uh, keep track on everything. Yep. Because the last thing you want to do is just spend money on something and then you go somewhere and it's not there or it doesn't make sense. And you don't want that, you know, that gray area, right? Nobody want to live in that gray area yeah. space when they're doing business with somebody. Yeah, you, you want to know. I mean, you should you should be able to. Not that not it's not necessarily even a trust thing. Like. You know, if I go to somebody and I, I expect a service, I trust that whether it's a handshake deal or a contract, I expect what we talked about is going to be yep. at the end, right? Yep. And, and generically, you know, things change, but I expect that to be at the end. And I don't see why that should be any different when we're building the car for somebody. Yep. It should be exactly the same. And most shops don't do it, like, at all. I, I, I can't tell you how many times people have... Um, come to me and be like, Pete, like, I don't, there's no shop that does this. Like, I don't understand, like, why nobody does this. Like, it's really easy. Like, everybody has got an iPhone, like, just share a note, yeah. make a spreadsheet. Like, it's, it takes two seconds, you know, and then you can, you get updates every day. You're like, oh, shit, they worked on my car. Oh, sick. And you scroll through yeah. the picture, you get excited. Yeah. I don't have to make a phone call and explain, like, everything necessarily all the time. And you're busy, I'm busy. So it, it's really, really nice to get everybody and my team involved at the same time so we can all work on the shit together, which is really, really fun for me. So, what do you think? Drives good? Yeah, Love it? Yeah. Good. It was our pleasure. Yeah, unfortunately, I can't take this out to Vegas. <laughs> can't do it unless you get a storage locker or something. <laughs> yeah. A, pr a private one, underground bunker. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. We're gonna have to do a two B continue on the R34. Yeah. Oh, don't, don't, don't even, don't even tempt me, bro. Yeah. Don't even tempt me. A V2. So today we're doing a V2 for uh, for Jose because yeah. uh, we just upgraded his turbos and stuff. So we're just, uh, we're doing like a second video for him today. That's it, John. Uh, it was a pleasure, big dog. Bro, thank you so much. Alrighty, Thanks for trusting us. Oh man, you got it, man. <laughs> you got it. All right, All right. let's get out of here. <laughs>